Firescape Academy inspector training video. Here we are in Seattle, Washington. And what we got here is a nice 15 plus story Firescape. And what we're looking for is uh, one of two things. In order for this Firescape to pass inspection, and uh, it's one of the back alleyways um, near Yesler, I believe. One of the things uh, you need in order to pass a Firescape inspection must be structurally sound, must be kept painted. So let's take a look at this Firescape. First of all, in Seattle, you need to have every Firescape tagged. There's no tag here on this Firescape, so it looks like it's never been inspected. Number two, you gotta look for the easiest violation to write. The easiest violation to write here is a paint violation. Let's look for it. My God, they did a great job of painting this fire escape. And that seems to be the thing nationwide. Everybody, to a certain degree, does a great job of painting the fire escape. And this fire escape is a nice beige one. And I'll tell you, the hardest thing you can ever paint the fire escape is a light color because the rust just comes through and it's just all kinds of issues. So, no paint violation on this one. Let's see if we can find anything else wrong with this fire escape that you could write a violation. So the next thing is structural. Structural is pretty simple. You look for the uh, look for change in hardware, meaning all these fire escapes are bolted connection fire escapes. So it's either has square head bolts or hex head bolts. So you look for the connections to see if they're original or if they've been swapped out, indicating that this fire escape has gone through some transformation in its 75 plus year life. And when you look at it, and you can only see so far, you look up, it doesn't seem to have any evidence of new square, any new hex head bolts on this fire escape anywhere. Now, it's impossible for a fire escape not to have any change of hardware on a fire escape this old. That means they've been doing a great job of painting it, but they've never really changed any of the hardware. So it's impossible. No engineer should be signing off or, sh or has signed off on a fire escape that has bolts that are 75 years old and that are at least, at least not at least reinforced and or at least replaced. So we're looking at an evidence of a very nice building, very nice painted fire escape, but no evidence of any refurbishment at all on this fire escape, either on the treads or on the supports. And you can see some evidence of rusting. Another thing you're looking at is into the walls. You can see some tears uh, of coming down near the supports of where they go into the wall, indicating that the cement connections are not sealed, so the fire escape is coming as water is getting into those connections, thereby making every connection into the wall suspect when you look up. So no evidence of refurbishment anywhere on the fire escape. And down here, it looks like it's been hit by trucks. So, and this ladder, look at that ladder. It's one of those flop out ladders that come out when you release it. So it looks like it has a chain. And when you release it, it comes down and hits that wooden piece down there. If that ladder was any longer, it would pr probably be illegal if it came all the way down to the ground. Um, but that single action requiring no special knowledge um, is questionable because the ladder is supposed to be a slide ladder or a fold-out ladder. Very rare do they let flop-out ladders be used because that's not an industry standard. So, if you have a question on this or any other videos that you've seen, uh, give us a call here at firescapeengineers.com, 866-649-0333. And this and any other video that you've seen on our YouTube channel, Farscape Academy Inspection Training, um, we can give you some additional training, additional insights. But one last thing that you have is you have this ladder. This is called the fireman's ladder. It runs the entire length of the building. We highly recommend, and it's not required by code, but it is an OSHA requirement on a lot of, fire, a lot of buildings and a lot of uh, ladders that are built, that there should be a cage around the entire ladder that is gonna be used by the firefighter. A firefighter climbing this 150 foot story building, if he has any reason to let go, anything that happens to him while he's climbing, fatigue or anything that occurs to him, smoke inhalation, he will fall to his death. So we highly recommend that the entire fire ladder that is beside the stack pipe should be covered with a cage, a round cage around it so that it'll protect the firefighter from any fall. Again, any questions, 866-649-0333.